Hey everyone, welcome back to Smart Mouth Beauty Raw. I'm Holly and today I thought we would just sit down and chit chat about um, my wedding story. And uh, some of you who know on Instagram, I got married a few weeks ago and uh, I just wanted to kind of tell the story and kind of fill you all in on um, my Paul and I getting married in New York. And um, we'll just chat about it. If you are new to our channel, Mondays are raw videos and raw means that they're unedited. There's no lights, there's no production. There's no Paul at the end of this video fixing it <laughs> or putting bloopers on or music or anything cool like that. Raw also means that we can talk about whatever we want to. A couple people had commented a few Mondays ago about it not being beauty related and we just don't care. Uh, Friday is our beauty videos and beauty related topics about hair, makeup, skincare, nails, a little fashion, whatever in that in that realm. But Monday our raw videos can just be us hanging out, you getting to know us individually because we are very different, Heather and I, and um, we'll just do whatever we want to on Mondays. So this is what we're doing today. So we're gonna chat about my wedding and if you wanna hear about it, then hang out here with me. I'm actually on my couch in the living room you can still see behind me, actually, Heather and I filmed uh, yesterday uh, on Sunday. We got together and filmed a whole bunch of uh, spring videos for you guys. So this is all of the camera equipment and all of these studio lights that, that we have still set up in the dining room. You can see my bourbon bar back there, but that's our dining room, my dining room table that we film at now instead of in the hair salon. So that's still set up from yesterday because we haven't cleaned up. I mean, she was here for like five hours and I'm exhausted and we just didn't. Okay. Anyway, so Paul and I got married um, a few weeks ago in New York and it it was so much fun. Um, I'm obviously very non-traditional and of course my Paul is going to be non-traditional in order for him to be with me. You know, the truth is, you know, I've been married a couple of times um, before and my first wedding was in Las Vegas and then my second wedding was kind of this big ordeal. So Paul's been married before and he got married in Las Vegas. So, you know, he didn't, boys don't really need all the pomp and circumstance, but he definitely wanted to make it unique and, and special. And I just didn't care, you know. At this point, it took me 40 years to find him, and I'm so grateful that I I didn't even care. Everybody's like, didn't you miss a big wedding? Don't you miss the big white dress? Don't you miss all? No, I really, really didn't. And he wanted to kind of, I think his goal was to kind of do a surprise wedding, but you can't really do a surprise wedding. You just can't do a surprise wedding. And it was really funny because I didn't care. I was like, if you want to surprise, but you can't really surprise someone because you have to go and get the marriage license, you know, 24 hours uh, prior. And you have to, I mean, there's certain, I mean, girls got to have a dress, you know. So even though I think he wanted an element of surprise, it just wasn't realistic. But I loved that he wanted to kind of take over, which was really, really shocking to a lot of my clients. A lot of my clients kind of, you know, see me as a control freak. And now, you know, I am a control freak in certain aspects of my life. But for me, at the end of the day, just being with my Paul was the goal. And, and however we got there, it just really didn't matter. I just, I honestly, I didn't care. I was completely okay with us just going down to the courthouse. I, and I didn't even, you know, it, it didn't even have to be that. It could have been you know, here at the house, getting married, uh, us going to a beach somewhere, us, you know, we didn't want to do Las Vegas because that's already done, but there's also, you know, places in Nashville, or not Nashville, but Gatlinburg that we could have gone to, but it wasn't important to have this big pomp and circumstance. It was not important for us to have our family there. It's just, it's just not who we are. And, um, at the end of the day, I just wanted to be with him. And I was just so excited just to be married to him. I don't know, there's just something very comforting to be married. And my last um, marriage ended very, um, very ugly. And so, you know, very traumatized from a, a, a past relationship as, you know, that can happen to anyone. 
you know, a lot of people were surprised that I wanted to get married again. And you just have to, when I just wanted to be with him. And it's just, you know, being in America, it's just easier to kind of be married. You get a lot of different benefits and advantages. And so at the end of the day, we just thought, okay, we'll just be married and that'll be that. And it'll be normal. It was so funny because his dad, uh, the day that we got married, which I'll tell you about, uh, his dad took us out to dinner and everything. And uh, he, his dad said, well, does it feel different? I mean, it had just been like an hour, you know, and his dad asked Paul if, if he felt different. And Paul, I think his first reaction was, yeah. But then I kind of looked at him and he was like, no. And it's like, I don't want it to feel different. Why do people ask, does it feel different? Like right after you got married, do you feel different? Like, what is that? That's a ridiculous, and no, you don't want it to feel different. I want it to feel the exact same. I want it to be the exact same. We were together for three years and I want it to be the exact same. So that's always a, a very weird leading question, but okay, anyway. So he's, you know, trying to play in this secret wedding. And I said, well, you know, I, I'm gonna need to like know a few things. I'm gonna need to like have some information. And he was like, oh, you'll know, you'll know. And I was like, how am I gonna know? And he's like, you'll know 24 hours in advance. And I was like, but that, you know, cert and I said, well, how, how, why will that be 24 hours in advance? And he made the mistake and he said, well, certain states require 24 hours in advance from the time you get your marriage license to the time you get married. So he had already kind of like slipped. There was a lot of slipping. There was a lot of slipping. It was so cute. Uh, he had already slipped and in, in, in kind of let that out that we were going to be out of town. So we had been planning on being in New York for months and months and months um, with our friends from, from Germany were coming over and we'd been planning this trip um, to go to New York with our friends from Germany. So that was the only time, and because it was such a big trip, I knew that we couldn't afford for the rest, you know, cause we only do like one big trip a year. And since that was our vacation, going out of town, I kind of knew that he wasn't, we weren't going to be able to afford to, to do a secondary thing. So because he had said it was out of town and because I knew that we had been planning this New York thing, I knew that that was that. So the New York thing was planned around my friend Gregor's 40th birthday. And so that kind of dictates you know, when it is, like his birthday's on the same day every year. Okay, so we knew we were gonna be in New York that weekend before Gregor's 40th birthday. So I had already kind of like deduced that that's when we were getting married. But I still didn't know, you know, what he wanted to do. I didn't wanna like kind of barge in on my friend Gregor's 40th birthday and like take over the weekend. I didn't want this big wedding weekend, but I did think it was kind of cool that if we were gonna be in New York, just go down to City Hall. Actually, City Hall in Manhattan, if you all wanna Google it, it's a beautiful building. The inside is beautiful. It's all this like old green marble. It's a huge place and people get married there. Actually, we were there for several hours. Um, we saw so many people getting married there at the building. It's a beautiful building. So I had Googled it, of course, and just was okay with, okay, that's where we'll go. We'll go to the county clerk's office or, or city hall in Manhattan and that's where we'll get married. Like that was completely okay with me. And so since I was trying to figure that out, I went ahead and like tried to plan my outfit. And I kept saying to him, you know, a girl's gonna need to know, like I need to make sure that my hair and my nails are done. And he's like, oh, they'll be done. But the truth is, Paul knows me so well that I don't go out of town without my hair and nails done. Like, we've been out of town together before and he knows the day before we leave, like, my hair's getting colored fresh, my nails are getting colored fresh, like, I'm ready. Like, he knew that I was gonna be ready. So I just had to get an outfit together. So, you know, I don't need the big white dress. That's not actually who I am, clearly. So, but I wanted something that still made me feel like a bride, but still felt like myself, which is kind of, I always kind of think of myself as, okay, it's snowing. It's like April the 16th and it's snowing. Okay. 
I think of myself as very feminine and edgy at the same time, which is why I love, one of my favorite designers is Betsy Johnson because she does like skulls and roses. And it, that kind of feels like who I am. I'm very contradictory, contra contradictory in that way where I like something super ruffly and pink, but like leather and studded. I don't know, it's just who I am. So I was thinking about New York and I was being so inspired by New York and I thought, um, I thought of that TV show Sex and the City where it's all taking place in New York and I started thinking about Carrie Bradshaw, that character, and she was very eclectic and funky and I thought, what would Carrie Bradshaw wear in New York to a wedding? And you know, keep in mind, I had already searched that it was gonna be below 30 degrees there. So that's a whole other thing. So I started you know, kind of searching this Carrie Bradshaw inspired New York wedding outfit. And I came across, you know, this couple of different brides that would wear like a leather jacket with their wedding dress, like their regular re wedding dress with a leather jacket. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna go that route. But the wedding skirts are really, really popular. That's just that tulle skirt where you just wear, essentially it's like the bottom of a wedding dress. So you just have the skirt has like an elastic band and it's just like layers and layers of tulle. It's like a big giant tutu. It's amazing. So I kind of had this idea where I would wear a white one and the leather jacket and like a black undershirt, like a black, uh, one of the girls that I had looked up online, she wore like a black turtleneck, but I'm like weird about turtlenecks, so I don't wear it. So I was thinking just like a black long sleeve shirt um, or a little black sweater. So I bought all of that. Like I got it all together. I got a white uh, tulle skirt and a black leather jacket and a black, you know, sweater and black leggings. I ordered some um, like fleece under armor, runners leggings or something anyway um so i got it all together and i put it on and i looked at it oh and some boots because i was going to wear some boots and the white just didn't i don't know the white just didn't feel good it just didn't feel good i mean it was fine but it just didn't feel good and it's always the, the everybody's like you just know when you know nah. like when you put on the wedding gown it's just like <gasps> the one and it just didn't feel like that so I searched some more and I just thought, you know, I have to be exactly who I'm going to be. And so I started looking at pink ones because that's who I am. That's what I need. I, I have to have the pink. So I found this awesome one on Amazon. I know. Like it was a little, I, I was like, screw it. I'm going to order it. It was like 30 bucks and I took a risk and I got it and it was amazing. I loved it. I was so grateful. I had read so many reviews and just makes you nervous ordering something on Amazon, but it was perfect. It fit really well. And because I knew I was wearing the leather jacket over it, I didn't have to worry about the length because I could always pull it up. Do you know what I mean? Like the leather jacket was going to hide it and I was, you know, so it was perfect. It was perfect. It looked awesome with my leather jacket and my um, combat boots. And so it just felt really, really good. So I uh, took it to New York and I thought, you know, if, if I'm going to wear it around New York and if it gets dirty, it gets dirty. If, if I wear it fine, if we're at city hall fine, I just, I didn't care, you know, at that point, I just wanted to feel good. So Another part of the story is I kind of figured out that our friend Gregor was going to be certified to be the officiant and marry us. I sort of figured that out and I think Paul was really heartbroken and Gregor also I think was really heartbroken that I had figured it out but I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to figure it out. Of course I harassed my Paul for like months about details because you know I wanted to make sure that a few things were were on the checklist. You know, you brides definitely have a checklist and I just wasn't sure if Paul understood the checklist. So, I needed photos. You know, Paul's a photographer, so it's like of course he would think of photos. I don't know. I don't know. So, that's a checklist and so it was really really important for me to have 
photos of the day. And so I'm kind of, we're at dinner. I remember we were at sushi one night and I remember really getting on him about, you know, I know a, a wedding photographer in New York. Let me contact her. Let me contact her. You know, she used to be a client of mine. In fact, she had done another wedding of mine. And I was like, let me contact her and just see what she's doing that weekend. And, you know, if we hire her for like an hour, you know, at least we'll just have some photos and that would be that. And he's like, no, don't do that. He, he was really adamant about no, don't do that. And I was like, well, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting across to you that I I'm going to need some photos. And he's like, he to shut me up, he was like, well, maybe I'll just give Nora my iPhone and have her film it. And I think he thought that that was going to be okay for me. But as soon as he said that, he had given it away about Gregor. And I just leaned back and I thought, I'm not going to say anymore because I just found another piece of the puzzle. But it had nothing to do with photography. We still had no idea how we were going to get photos of the wedding, but that's all the part. Okay. So if you rewind like a year and a half ago, Paul and I went to Nora and Gregor's house in Germany and got to know them. And the, the fun thing about Nora and Gregor at that time, uh, Gregor had an iPhone uh, from Apple and Paul is a big iPhone, Apple snob. And of course I have an iPhone. But Nora didn't at the time. And so it was kind of the three against one. And while we were going around Germany and taking pictures and photos and using our iPhones, she was the one that didn't have an iPhone. And she kind of got like, you know, she was like, I don't, I don't like those iPhones. I don't, you know, I don't understand why you all like them. And so we kind of teased her for being the odd one out. Like she didn't want the iPhone. She didn't understand it. She didn't like it. So the three of us being iPhone people kind of teased Nora about being a non iPhone, you know, playfully teased her. So fast forward to us being at the sushi place and Paul says to me to shut me up. Well, maybe I'll hand my iPhone to Nora and she'll film it. So I'm thinking, why would you hand your iPhone to the non iPhone person and have her film it? What's Gregor doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? So that kind of gave it away, but I backed off of it and didn't want to, because he didn't really tell me. It's just the process because girls are just so much smarter than boys, but whatever. I cannot believe it's snowing. And that's probably why my nose is running. Thank you, snow. Thank you, Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, so that's when I kind of figured out, okay, there's a chance that, that Gregor might marry us, which takes away the City Hall equation. So that opens it up to be like a whole other process in New York. So I'm thinking if we go to get, you know, go to the city hall and get, get our license, that's a Friday. City hall is closed Saturday and Sunday. So if we have to wait, and the only time we could get our marriage license was Friday. So if we had to wait 24 hours to get married and city hall was closed, that meant that we couldn't get married again if we were doing the city hall route until Monday. So that's a long time. Plus that's Gregor's birthday and I didn't, I didn't, I mean, if we, if we did it on his birthday, that's fine, but I didn't want to. So I was super excited that they were like working this out because then we could get married on a Saturday or Sunday and we could get married anywhere. The, you know, because we had him with us and we already had the marriage license, I'm figuring we could get married anywhere. Like the possibilities were endless. Like I was thinking Brooklyn Bridge, you know, Central Park, um, you know, the Statue of Liberty or, you know, I, we could have, the, the possibilities opened up. So it never dawned on me, Times Square. I don't, I have no idea why I didn't think of Times Square, but I really, really didn't. So Paul's planning this whole big Times Square thing. And I, that was a big surprise for me. I did not I, it didn't, I know, I know, I know. It didn't cross my mind. I don't, I don't know. I was thinking Brooklyn Bridge or I was thinking there's like that boardwalk at the bottom of Brooklyn, some sort of like along the, the coast, along the edge. Anyway, I was just, I was thinking outside, you know, in Brooklyn for some reason. So we get there on 
Friday morning, we had to go down the county clerk's office, and I had told Gregor, I was like, you all don't have to go. We're just going to run down there and get the license, you know, turn in the application. You all don't have to go. You know, stay here at the Airbnb. We'll come back and get you. It could be a couple of hours. Don't worry. Don't worry. And Gregor says, oh, no, we're not splitting up. And so I thought that was really weird. So I went back in the room, and I changed clothes, but I kind of I didn't know that he had to register as the officiant because I didn't have all the details, but I thought, well, maybe he does have to go because I had already figured it out that he was doing it. So I went back in the room to change clothes and I come back out and he, he was so cute. He had on his clergy pin. So apparently in the certification registration packet that he got in the mail, um, he had gotten this little clergy pin and then he had gotten his registration application because apparently after you go online and, and do the certification to, to be, you know, um, the officiant, you then have to register in the county of which you were going to perform the wedding. So I didn't know all those details. So he clips on his clergy pin and you know, they're all looking at me to be surprised. And I walked through the room and I was like, yeah, I already know and walked out. And I think he was so, they were all like, and they all like gave these evil eyes to Paul. It was awesome. But Paul didn't do it. I, I figured it out myself. He didn't really purposely tell me, but I'm a smart girl. So we all go down the county clerk's office, take a number, take a seat. They took a number, took a seat and he got registered and he had to sign this really big book. It was so cool. And his, you know, there's, there's, hundreds of thousands of people that get certified to marry people. It's like this big deal in the United States. He didn't know that it was a thing that you could do because Paul had asked him to do that back in like October. And he was like, what? You want me to like become ordained? And he's like, it's this universal life church and people do it all the time. He's like, this is a thing. So it was so sweet that Gregor like took the time to figure it out. And him and Paul have been conspiring, um, you know, behind my back and like figuring all this out. It's so cute. And it, it, it really meant a lot. It was so, it was really, really special. So we all go down the county clerk's office, blah, blah, blah. When we were at the county clerk's office filling out the application, Paul and I were at the little window, you know, and the lady's writing, you know, and the lady said, what county? And so Paul's like, because she needed to know what county we were getting married in. Paul's like, I don't, I don't know. And she's like, oh, um, you know, what, what church, where's the location of the wedding? Like, meaning like what church or what? And Paul just sat there and I could, I should have gotten up. But it happened so fast and he had to tell her Times Square so that she could notate the county. Because we don't know. We don't know the counties. And so Paul hesitates for like a long time. He was like, Times Square. And the lady was like, oh, people, you know, get married there all the time. That's a na na na, you know, and she's filling it out. And I could tell he just kind of deflated a little bit because... I think he just still wanted, he wanted some element of surprise. He really did. And I just kept, I, I just kept figuring it out. But that was really surprise. It really did not dawn on me Times Square. So there was still some loose ends though, because we, we weren't sure what time of day, you know, do you want it to be in the day with the sun out? Do you want to be at night with all those lights? Like, what was it? In the meantime, that Friday night, Paul gets a, a phone call from his dad. His dad calls him occasionally. They're, they're very close, and, and, and so dad will call him, you know, occasionally. But Friday night was a really strange phone call conversation. And I'm all I'm hearing is Paul's in, of course. And Paul's like, uh-huh, yeah, everything's okay. Yes, not yet, not yet. I don't know, not yet. Okay, okay, all right, bye. And I didn't think anything of it, and I just thought maybe his dad knowing that Paul was going to surprise me with the location and things like that. I think his dad, I thought, I guess I just thought his dad was calling to see if he told me yet, um, if we had figured out the time yet and you know, like what the details were. So Saturday morning comes around and we decide to go all the way out sightseeing at the Intrepid, um, and, and do some stuff that morning. So I was kind of figuring that we would get married later on that night. And he got a phone call from his dad that morning while we were at the Intrepid sightseeing. 
And it was the same conversation. No, not yet. Uh huh. Everything's okay. Yes. Later. Uh huh. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Bye. And I just thought that that's so weird. Like, why is his dad like really? I I, I guess I just thought his dad was excited and just wanted to know what we had what we were gonna do. So. <laughs> A few hours later, we were coming back from the Intrepid, going back to the Airbnb. Uh, we had stopped and got some bourbon, whatever. He gets this, another phone call, or I can't remember the order, you know, of this, but he gets this other phone call, and he, it was the exact same thing. And I was like, "Your dad is here, like your dad's here," and he was like, "Yeah, I think he's here." It was so it was so funny because he kept trying to nail down like what the plan was. And I was like, they are here. It was so cute. So his dad and his dad's fiance, Denise, surprised us, or at least surprised me because I had no idea what was going on. So we went back to the, uh, Paul and I went back to the Airbnb. We had left our friends uh, out sightseeing and we thought, let's go back to the Airbnb and change clothes. Cause it, the Airbnb was about an hour away from Times Square and where we were. So we, we knew that it was going to take an hour to get back to the Airbnb. It was going to take me about an hour to get ready, you know, and then an hour back in. So we knew we had about a three hour, um, adventure to go and like prepare. And we were just so calm and casual about, you know, we didn't have a set time. We, you know, we knew that it was going to be in Times Square. But whatever time we got back there was whatever time we got back there. We just didn't, we didn't have anything to, to do, you know, there was no, we weren't meeting an officiant. We weren't trying to be at the chapel on time. We weren't trying to, there was no time restraints. And so that was really, really comfortable. I got my big old pink skirt on and we got dressed and we went out to Times Square and we found our friends Nora and Gregor again, which was crazy because Times Square Saturday night to like find somebody, we we found our friends again, but Gregor's really tall, so mm -hmm. uh, And then we found Dad and Denise. It was like, so I think Paul had shared his location on iPhone. If you have an iPhone, you know that it's like, you can share locations. So we had like shared our location with dad and Denise and met up with them. We were kind of outside this McDonald's in Times Square and we were just like, okay, we're all here. I got my big tutu on and should, we're just going to do this. And, and Paul had brought the rings and apparently handed them to Nora and we just stood in the middle of Times Square and got married. It was crazy. And you know, Gregor had his, his, uh, the thing he has to say, you know, cause I think he was really nervous. It was so cute, but he wanted to make sure he got all of the things that he was supposed to say, uh, right. So he had the, the sheet of paper with him and, uh, one, and, uh, Denise brought me some flowers. So that was awesome because I don't think Paul had that on his checklist. It wasn't really on my checklist. It really wasn't important. I don't, I'm not, you know, but I was very grateful. The reason I was so grateful about having the flowers is because it really signified, I think, to the crowd what was going on. Because, I mean, I definitely had sort of a wedding look going on, but I wasn't sure that that resonated. It could have just been some crazy lady in New York with a tutu on. Yeah. So I think the flowers was what set it apart. I don't know. So anyway, Gregor just starts the ceremony and he's, you know, he's, he takes a big stance and he's, you know, kind of got a good voice and belting it out and people just backed up. It was incredible. People just knew and they just kind of backed up. And so, you know, Paul's kind of looking this way. I'm kind of looking at him and I saw this like semi-circle of people like on the other side of the him. And so behind me was more of the street. So he's like looking at a few people, but then there's like a street. So he didn't see, cause he didn't turn around cause he was facing me. And so people are cheering and clapping and like some ladies like, I like your hair. And I'm like, thanks. And like people are cheering. And so finally, like he turns, I don't know how, you know, what part of the ceremony, cause it was all quite a blur. He turns, he, his eyes get real big and he was like, 
<laughs> he had no idea that there was like this big like semicircle of people congregating and like cheering and, and everything. But it was awesome and Nora cried. It was so cool. And uh, so she had her ring. So of course I went first on the whole, you know, get your ring. And Paul and I had, you know, to save on some money, we had talked about maybe getting our rings later because there was a lot of expense going into our vacation. And we just thought, you know, it doesn't matter. Let's just get some sort of ring that we can just exchange during the ceremony and get other rings later. You know, it's, it's fine. And I kept thinking that Paul would ask me for my engagement ring back that he could just use then at the ceremony. But he had he had gone up to get him uh, pick out the ring that he wanted, and I just thought, well, maybe he just got me something just temporary. Although I had picked out one. Uh, but he said it was too expensive. <laughs> it's fine. So Nora has this ring box that's like a double ring box that holds like both rings instead of two individual boxes. So when it was my turn and Gregor's like, you know, get the ring to give to Paul, blah, blah, blah. So I turn to Nora and Nora like opens this box and all I could see is the ring that I wanted, like my shiny bling bling ring. And I'm like, but I knew I had to like grab Paul's ring, but I'm so distracted because like my ring's right next to Paul's ring. And I'm like, and I had to like, I had to focus so hard to like, pick up his ring and like, okay. You know, it was so crazy. Cause I was so excited to see the ring that, that I wanted. It was very special. So we did all that and, and did a whole lot of smooching and laughing. I thought I was going to cry, but honestly we were so happy. I just, I laughed, which was so, it's so Paul and I like I'm laughing. He's laughing. We just laughed. It was so perfect. People are cheering. Um, you can see, I have our, our photos, but if you want to get a good look at our photos, you'll have to go on Instagram and get a better look, but I'll hold some up. This is uh, Nora and Gregor, and then his dad and Denise right here. Um, so that was us after, but uh, let me see if I can show you the one of us cheering. Um, and we again, we were just like laughing. Here's the one. So here's us like cheering at the crowd. You can see all those people behind us. You can see my big pink tutu and um, we're just cheering in Times Square and how it was so great. We just laughed, like look at us laughing. We're just laughing. It was, it was just perfect. And this is probably my favorite one, but you all can go on Instagram You can see my combat boot. <laughs> it was gold. I was so happy to have my boots on and I accidentally left my scarf on, which is fine. I sort of thought maybe I would wear my skull scarf. Um, it's this beautiful um, cashmere uh, skull scarf that a friend gave me. But you can see my, my skulls there a little bit more, but we're just laughing. We just had the best time. It was so much fun. There's one. Look at look at how cheesy I am getting my ring. I was like, ah, my ring. <laughs> anyway, so after that, then um, <laughs> look at how we're, I don't know what we're laughing about. Uh, we had the best time, and then Paul, uh, Paul's dad and Denise uh, took us to sushi dinner. Then after there in Times Square, and uh, then they they went back the next day. Paul's you know dad and Denise just popped in for like one night and like hung out with us, and then left and then we stayed and celebrated Gregor's 40th birthday in New York. Um, he had two goals. One was to be at the top of the Empire States building, which we made happen. And the second one to be uh, at Katz's Deli. Uh, Katz's Deli is the famous deli in the movie when Harry met Sally and Sally Meg Ryan had a fabulous um, experience at the diner. So we got to go to the diner and, and have all of that and all that kind of good stuff. And then we came home um, the next day. So that was it. It was it was such a fun experience just being in Times Square with our friends and um it was it was awesome. It was unexpected, which was perfect for me. It was unusual, which was perfect for us. We had so much fun. It was low key, low pressure. I mean, I have experienced it all, not only with with doing a wedding myself in the past, but 
having to experience or not having to get, you know, it's a privilege to be able to hang out with a bride and do her hair and makeup on her special day. It's very hard. And I've done a lot of brides and they're all very stressed. I see it. I see the conflict that it puts on their family. I see the conflict that it puts on them. I see the conflict that it puts on their their experience of the day. You know, I, I've seen it. I've seen the people pleasing, you know, you brides will want to please their moms on the wedding day and do everything that their mom wants them to do. And it's, that's horrible. That is a horrible thing. You know, this is your day, you're in love, you you should be with your partner and do everything for, for you. But weddings are a million dollar industry here in America, at least. They're not for the bride and groom. 100% not for the bride and groom. You do everything for everybody else. The dress is for everybody to look at. The food is for everybody else to eat. The photos are for everybody else to look at later. You know, all of the stuff, all this pomp and circumstance is for everybody else. And it it's so much money and it causes a lot of turmoil. Um, a lot of disagreements happen. Um, there's a lot of expense, so much expense. And I can't, I see it, I see it all the time. Um, so, I'm very grateful that we didn't have to do all that and, and it get crazy. So, but that's just me and my experience. Everybody has their own checklist. And like I said, I've done all kinds of other stuff in the past. And this time was just, you know, I get to do what I want to do, which is part of being in your forties, right? Right. Thanks for hanging out with me today and listening to me tell you about our wedding story in New York and, um, our Instagram is linked below if you want to go and see um, some more photos of Paul and I in Times Square with Nora and Gregor and um, give this video a thumbs up and uh, come back next Monday and hang out with Heather or me. I don't know who it's going to be. And uh, thanks for watching.